Hi everyone, I'm back with a new video on an important topic, breakfast. There are a lot of bad breakfast foods out there, which unfortunately leads to unhealthy breakfasts. While good options exist, it's hard to create something that's healthy, tasty, and easy to make. So today, I'm going to walk you through my default breakfast as an example. So, let's take a look at what goes into my healthy breakfast. I like to start my day with fruits for health reasons. For starters, eating five or more servings of fruit and vegetables daily is associated with a lower risk of all types of death. A BMJ study of studies that examined 830,000 people found that risk of death from all causes dropped as reported fruit and veggie consumption increased up until five servings daily. If that's not compelling enough, higher fruit and veggie consumption also makes you more attractive. In a TED Talk by Professor David Parrott, it's shown that eating fruits and veggies is associated with a nicer complexion. This preferred look is achieved through skin yellowness, which is higher in those who eat more fruits and vegetables. So like any person who wants to live a long time and succeed on Hinge, I start off with a pear. I like pears because they're high fiber content. Soluble fiber keeps you feeling full longer, and insoluble fiber promotes healthy stomach bacteria. When it comes to pears, I prefer organic to regular. The EWG releases an annual Dirty Dozen of the produce most contaminated with pesticides. Pears ranked number 9 on their most recent list, so I recently switched to organic to avoid the chemicals. And guess what? This isn't an expensive option, especially if you eat fruit by the piece. In my experience, conventional pears are 66% bigger than a standard serving, while organic pears tend to match it. So, the $1 per pound increase in cost is offset by the more normal size of pear. Pear break. Mmm. The other fruit I eat each morning is an orange. These are good because they're only 80 calories a pop and contain your entire daily dose of vitamin C, which is an essential nutrient to good health. As you can see, I prefer the Kara Kara oranges that come in a bag. I have found these to be sweeter, juicier, and no more expensive than the insipid bulk oranges that can be purchased individually. Rest assured, these are pretty fire. And now for the best part, peanut butter oatmeal. This is the food that's going to fill you up until lunchtime. Ingredient number one, peanut butter, the glue that keeps the dish together. For one serving of peanut butter oatmeal, use one tablespoon of peanut butter. I'm making a double serving though since I'm 215 pounds and one portion's not going to cut it. Once it's scooped out, microwave the peanut butter for 25 seconds to make the consistency more liquid. This is going to make it easier to mix with the oatmeal. Unlike pears and oranges, peanut butter is a good source of healthy, unsaturated fat. Eating fat provides more of a full feeling than eating carbs, making this a good complement to the fruit. After the microwave, it's time for the old-fashioned oats. Add half a cup of oats for one serving and one for the double. Then, mix together the oats and peanut butter until well combined. I've already talked about how fiber makes you feel full longer, and oats are another significant source of it. For reference, oats are the most soluble fiber-dense food I consume on a regular basis. To wrap it up, my default breakfast consists of one organic pear, one carrot carrot orange, and peanut butter oatmeal. The results are good health, looking pretty, and staying full for hours. However, a key consideration is that this breakfast is not a significant source of protein, so make sure to get enough during lunch and dinner if you choose to use it. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video.